And then we're going to take about five deep breaths here. One hand on the heart, the other under the abdomen. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. And take your last deep inhale and exhale. And now place one hand on the heart, on the top of the head, draw the ear to one side. And the other side. Open the chest up, drop the head back. Interlace the fingers behind the head, draw the chin into the chest. And coming to center, we're gonna just relax our face muscles a little bit here. Massaging around. And then the fingers under the ears. Working the way down, your way down the sides of the neck, feeling around for any Tension. And then give your neck a squeeze and your shoulders. And then shake your arms out. Drop your chin to your chest, roll your head to one side. And then the other side. One more time on each side. And then we'll roll our shoulders here. And then change direction. Bring one arm over, draw it in, circle the hand. And then change direction. Give it a shake, other side. And then change direction. And a shake, extend one hand, flip it, draw the palm towards your body. And the other side. And then catch um, an elbow, draw it over to the side. And the other side. And then coming to center, we're going to work on our seated twist. So taking a deep breath in, stretch your arm up, exhale, lunge the hand behind you, other hand outside of me, deep breath here into the nose. Exhale everything. And carefully and slowly twist, looking over the shoulder, trying to squeeze those internal organs. Detoxify them. You can still breathe, but breathe shallowly. And then slowly and carefully unwind so as not to pull any muscles. Taking a deep breath in, stretch up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come to center. And the other side. Deep breath in, stretch up. Exhale, plant the hand. Other hand outside of the knee, deep breath here. Exhale everything to the mouth. Squeeze and twist, looking over the shoulder. So squeezing out that old oxygen. And now we're gonna slowly and carefully unwind. Letting the fresh oxygen into those internal organs. Deep breath in, stretch up. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, come to center. One hand to the side, the other towards the sky. Envision a beautiful blue sky above you. And the other side. And then come to center. We're gonna get ready to do our cat and cow. So come into your tabletop. And for cat and cow, we're gonna take a deep breath here, dropping the belly, raising the head. Exhale, arch in the back, drawing the chin in for your cat. Inhale, back to cow. Dropping the belly, raising the head. Exhale, back to cat. Inhale, last time for cow. Exhale, last cat. Coming to tabletop, bring your knees together and we're gonna do a little sway side to side. One more time on each side. Coming to center. Now, not all of you might be able to do this, but give it a try. So take your, the palms of your hands and place them one hand leg up a bit up higher than they were. Lift your feet off the ground and then just drop the, the hips. And then push your shoulders back and look up, if you can do it. And then come back. So you can bring your hands back to your tabletop, just under your shoulders, and we'll work on our balance a little bit here. So extending one leg, pulling in the tummy nice and tight, pointing the toes, Extending the other arm, the opposite arm, really engaging here. And now flex the foot, push the heel back. And come to tabletop, a quick child's pose here. And then coming back, to tabletop, other side. Pull the tummy in nice and tight. Sending the opposite arm, pointing the toes. Engaging the whole body. And now flex the foot and push the heel back. And then coming back to your tabletop, we're gonna come into our um, child's quote, wide knee chest pose. So open up the knees. Step back on the heels, have your big toes touching each other, extend your hands as far as they'll go, apply your third eye, which is your forehead, to the mat. If you can, if you can't, then, then just extend your, your head um, as, long, as far as it will go. Now apply pressure with your fingers open wide to the mat. That's your palms, applying pressure to the mat. And envision the beautiful earth energy entering through your palm, entering through your third eye, and rippling through your body until it reaches your toes. And then you can give your toes a little wiggle here. And then coming up to your tabletop, tuck your toes, raise the hips up for downward facing dog. Pedaling here, pulling the tummy in, and then pause, push the heels down, bring the chin into the chest. Look forward, you can jump or walk to the top of your mat, and then take a deep breath in, stretch your arms up, bring your, your hands to prayer, to heart center, to mountain pose. You can lift your toes up, clamp them to the mat. Envision drawing that earth energy in through the feet, 
up to the core, tucking in the tailbone, tucking in the abs. Keep your shoulders and just roll them back and down away from your ears. And now envision shooting that beautiful earth energy down your arms, out through your fingertips, back towards the earth. And then give your fingers a little bit of um, a twist. Come um, to your open foot stance. So have your feet open a little bit wider than your hips or whatever gives you the best balance for your hip circles. Put a bend in the knees and let's do our big hip circles. And then we're gonna change direction. And then come to center. Working on our leg joints, extend one leg and circle here. And change direction. And draw it in and twist out. And the other side. And the other way. And twist it. Extending one leg, pointing the toes and flexing. Point, flex, point, flex. Last time, point, flex and circle the foot. And change direction. And draw it in, twist it. Other side. Point, flex, point, flex, point, flex. Last time, point, flex, and circle. And then change direction. Draw it in and twist out. Opening up the chest, begin to circle, getting bigger and bigger. And then smaller and smaller. If you have shoulder problems, you might not want to do this. Stretch and the opposite way. Remember, you don't have to do all the things that we're doing. It, it all depends on your body type and your injuries. And almost all of us have some kind of injury. So we don't want to aggravate that. Be very careful. Okay, so we're ready for a sun salutation. So let's stop, step to the top of our mat. Hands to heart center. Let's first take a deep breath here, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And now taking a deep breath in, stretch your arms all the way up, exhale and fold forward. Now you can have a bend in your knee if you like. You don't have to have your legs straight. And actually it's kind of good for your, your knees if you always have a little bit of a, we call it a micro bend in the knee. So breathing in, bring your hands to your knees for your halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. And one more time, breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, now bring your hands to your mat. Stretch one leg out. And then the other leg out. Coming into your high plank. Now swivel your elbows so the inside face forward so you can do proper chaturanga. Otherwise, your elbows will stick out and you want your elbows close to your body. Taking a deep breath in, shift forward, chaturanga down. So like if your elbows were in the wrong direction, you, um, your elbows would be sticking out like that if you didn't sw swivel them. So you can come up to your low cobra. If you're in your low co cobra, pushing up from your sternum, no pressure on the hands. Or you can come up to your your high cobra, your full cobra. Or you can come up to your upward facing dog. And just hang on a second. You guys do that, I'm gonna admit. Okay. 
So for upward facing dog, the difference would be your cobra, your knees are on the ground. But for upward facing dog, the knees are off the ground. And then tap the toes. Come into your down dog. And pedal here. Pause, push both heels down to the mat. Bring the chin into the chest. Release your head, give it a shake. Take a deep breath in, raise your right leg up. And then you're gonna bend at the knee and step forward. Now not everyone can step so far forward. So if your foot lands back here, you can kind of just take your hand and help your foot to come forward. So we're gonna drop our knee here and so that we're in a low lunge and then bring the arms up to warrior one arms. And then just envision the beautiful earth energy entering through the feet, coming up to the body and shooting that beautiful energy out through your fingertips to the universe. Now, Interlace your fingers, having your four fingers pointing up, and then just tilt back a little bit more if you can do it. Then coming back to your warrior one arms, swing them back, interlace your fingers, same mudra, behind your back, pulling your hand down. Opening the chest up, dropping the head back. Okay, I'm going to, I have to um, unmute you guys again. So with your right foot, heel toe over to the right side. And then taking a deep breath in here. Exhale everything. And fold forward, drawing the arms up. And then slowly come up. Now, I forgot to tell you guys, if you wanted to use your, your little towel for your knee, if you have knee palms and you need a little bit um, more protection on your knee, you can use a towel there. So now we're gonna, in a, can everybody unmute themselves? If you can't, I'll, I'll take a break in a second and try to un unmute you. So from this position, we're gonna take this back leg and flip the foot so that the foot is now parallel to the back of the mat. Heel toe your foot back in, your front foot back in, coming into warrior two. So just check your position that your Ankle is uh, under your knee. Back foot is flush with the back of the mat. Open up the arms for your warrior. Two, gaze over your front fingertips. Lift your toes up and clamp them to the mat. Envision drawing the beautiful earth energy in through the feet, up through the core, tucking in the tail and sucking in the abs. Take your shoulders and just roll them back and down away from the ears. And now flip your front palm and draw it up for reverse warrior. And now we're going to rest the, the forearm on the knee palm facing up. Come into extended side angle pose. Just hold it there. And I'm going to check this thing out here. Let's see. Okay. Mute. Okay, I think everybody's muted. All right, come back um, into your warrior two. Straighten up your front leg. Take a deep breath here in through the nose, out through the mouth. Shift the body forward and come into your triangle pose. 
Feel yourself sinking a little deeper into the pose. At the waist, pivot into your airplane pose. And then continue to pivot into your revolt triangle pose. So your hand can be on the ground or it can be on your ankle or leg, wherever it's best for you. Then come back to your airplane. Come back to your triangle. And then try and sink a little deeper again. Let the front palm draw it up. Reverse triangle. Now we're going to cartwheel our arms down to the mat. Coming back into the high plank. Swiveling our elbows so the insides face forward. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga down. Inhale, low cobra, a full cobra or an upward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift the hips for a down dog, and pedal here. Pause, push both heels down, bring the chin into the chest. And give your head a shake. Taking a deep breath in, raise the left leg up. Now, I find it easier to make that big step forward if I uh, come to the ball, ball of the foot that's on the ground. That just gives me a little bit of extra stretch forward. But like I said, if your foot lands here, just take your hand and help your foot up a little bit. So coming into your low lunge, drop the knee. And bring your arms up. So you're in warrior one with the arms. Now envision drawing in the earth energy in through your feet, up to your core, shooting it out through your fingertips to the universe. And now make a mudra with your hands and tilt back a little bit. And coming back to warrior one, arms, swing them behind you, interlace. You can make the same mudra with your hand, opening the chest up, and you're gonna heel toe your front foot to the left. Should be your left foot that's out at the front. Take a deep breath here, in through the nose. Exhale, fold forward. Drawing the arms up. So it's a version of humble warrior. And like I said, you could be using a towel to pad that knee. Come back up. And you can take your hands to the mat, your back foot. You're just going to flip it so that it is parallel to the back of the mat and come into your warrior two. So you might have to adjust a little bit. Knee over ankle, back foot parallel to the back of the mat. Extending the arms, gazing over your front fingertips. Lift the toes up, clamp them to the mat. Draw the third energy in up to the core, tucking the tailbone, tucking in the abs, rolling the shoulders back and down, away from the ears. And now flip your front palm, draw it up for your reverse warrior. And then rest that forearm on your thigh, palm facing up. Come into your extended side angle pose. Come back into warrior two, straighten up the front leg, a deep breath here, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Shift forward, come into your triangle pose.
See if you can sink a little deeper in the pose. Now at the waist, we're gonna pivot into our airplane pose. And then we're gonna to continue to pivot into the both triangle pose. Back into your airplane pose. Back into your triangle pose. Sinking a little deeper. And now flip the bottom palm, draw it up for your reverse triangle. And then come to your mountain pose and then just twist out your hips. I want to do um, half loop with you guys. It's helpful if you have a block. If you don't have a block, you can use a chair or a couple of books. Um, Robert, you're a guy, you probably don't need a block for this because your arms are long enough. So it all depends on the length of your arms. So um, you're gonna be either touching the ground like this if you don't have a block or a strap or, or a, um, a chair or a stool, your hands will just touch the ground for this. If you happen to have a, a book or a, a game, um, you can, a, bo a box game, you can put your fingers on it. Um, I like to use the medium height for this. And then when I go into the half moon down, I raise the block to the highest height. But like I said, you can just have your fingers to the ground. So coming back to your mountain, Step your left leg back and bring your fingertips, like I said, either to the ground or grabbing your block. You can put a bend in the front knee and raise your left leg up. Now, if this is enough of a challenge for you, you, you can just leave it right there. If you want to continue to the next level, flex the back foot and extend Extend the arm. So if you don't have that block, it will look like this. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, you can take your block and flip it if you need it, if you need to. You draw your knee into your chest, grabbing the outside of your foot, kicking back, and then pulling your shoulder back. This is half moon bound. And it, it's supposed to create a bow and arrow effect. Your front leg does not have to be straight. And then bring it in. Give it all a shake and a twist. Oh, I think somebody just came in. Hang on a sec. Yeah, I guess I lost them. <laughs> if I don't see them fast enough, then they, they disappear on me. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side. So again, I'm gonna use my block, placing it so I can reach it there. Mountain pose, right leg back, reach for the ground or your block or your book or your stool or chair, and then raise your leg. Now you can keep it right there, or you can flex the foot and reach through the sky, or you can take it to the final level, which is half moon bound, bringing the knee in, grabbing the foot, kicking back, pulling the shoulder back. And you can gradually pull it back further and further. And then you can bring it in. Give it a shake and a twist.
Okay. Let's do our tree pose now. Oh, no. yeah, we'll do our, I want to do dancer's pose. You'll need a chair, maybe. Not everyone needs a chair, but um, a chair might come in handy for some of you. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to do tree pose. Take a deep breath in, stretch the arms all the way up, bringing your arms down, catch one leg, bring it out to the side, slide the foot in. You can remain right there or you can raise it to your calf or you can tuck it in to your inner thigh. Finding that point in front of you to stare at your drishti, once you feel like you've found your balance, you can grow your branches. If you'd like to make a mudra with the fingers, you can. Or with the hands, heart center. Or above your head. And then release. And give it a shake and a twist. And we'll do that on the other side. Deep breath in, stretch up. Arms down, catch the other leg. Slide the foot in there or to your calves. Dip the knee. You never want to put the foot on the knee. You want to put extra pressure on the knee joint. Finding your drishti. Once you find your balance, go your branches. You can make the mudra. And release. Give it a shake and a twist. So um, last week and this week, we were practicing our dancer's pose. Next week, we'll work on um, eagle's pose. But right now, we're trying to get our dancer's pose a little bit better. So if you've got that chair, have it just so that your finger, your stretch out your arm and your fingertips can touch it. You don't want it too close. You may not need it at all. Um, it depends on how advanced you are in the pose. So I'm going to turn this way just to show you how to get started. Taking a deep breath in, stretch up. Bring one of your hands down so that the palm is facing up. And the reason it's facing up is because we're going to raise that leg up and catch the inside of the foot. Now, if that's too difficult for you, you can catch the outside of the foot. Um, but the proper pose is the inside if you can do it. Now, I'm just going to turn around so that you can see the other way. If you'd like to make a mudra with your fingers, you can. Now, if this is enough of a challenge for you, you can remain right here. Or you can take it to the next level by kicking back into the hand. Or if you want to take it to the next level, fold forward. So here, if you're having difficulty, you can hold on to the chair. Remember, you don't have to have that um, leg that you're standing on perfectly straight. You have a little bit of a bend in it. And then bring it in. Take it out and twist it out. Okay, we're going to do some pranayama here. So let's do what they do at Moksha Yoga. It's actually called Modo Yoga now. Let's do their pranayama. I really like that. So let's bring our hands to heart center. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale. Take a deep breath in. Interlace your fingers and push down, exhaling. Inhale, drawing your hands 
up towards the sky. Turn your hands and make a prayer um, mudra, exhaling as you come down. Interlace your fingers as you're passing your heart center and push down. Now take a deep breath in as you raise your hands back up. Turning your hands to prayer, exhaling, interlacing your fingers, pushing down. Inhaling, drawing your hands up. Flipping your hands to prayer, exhaling, interlacing the fingers as you pass your chest, pushing down. Inhale, drawing up. And our last exhale, bringing your hands to prayer, exhaling, pushing your hands down. And then give it a shake and a twist. So we're going to work on our other side for, for our dancer's pose. Take a deep breath in, stretch up, dropping your hand, palm facing up. Raise your leg up, catch the inside of your foot, if you can do it, if not the outside. You can make that mudra with your fingers if you like. I'm going to turn the other way. When you're ready and steady, um, you can kick back. If you can now, take it to the next level. Pull forward. And pull that foot up. And remember, you can hold on to that chair if you like. And come down. Give a shake. And a twist. Okay. All right. We have some time for some other um, postures. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do Bird of Paradise since we're standing up. Not everyone can do Bird of Paradise. If you need to take a break at this point, you can. It, it, the Bird of Paradise is is to advance the post for you, but I have people on here of all different levels, so I try to cater to everybody, um, from beginners to more advanced. Now, when I do Bird of Paradise, go ahead and laugh at me if you want to, that's fine, <laughs> because it looks really funny. So for Bird of Paradise, we're gonna start with our legs a little bit um, further than hip distance apart. Putting a bend in the knees, we're going to swing, we'll pick an arm, I'm, I'm going with my right arm, but um, for you guys that might look like left arm, swinging that arm down and under, you take the other hand, bring it around and wrap, so it's a bind, I'm going to turn around, excuse my rear end, but so that you can see it. So you see my fingers are grabbing each other. So not everybody's hands actually reach this far. Um, some people can use a strap if they like. So then you kind of shift your weight onto the one leg. And when you're ready and steady, you bring your leg up. You're trying to um, have your back straight if you now when you're ready and steady, extend your leg. And that's all I can do. It's not my best pose. <laughs> Give it a shake and a twist. So that's Bird of Paradise. Now we'll do it on the other side. Actually, let's take a deep breath first. Breathing in, exhale. <sighs> Opening the legs up, other arm swings through, under, interlace. The finger, that grab the finger into a bind, slide over to your other foot, get ready and steady. And then come up. Now, when you feel like you're ready and steady, extend that leg. Okay, so I'm on my right leg now, so I'm much better on my right leg. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, it's a crazy one. 
so sorry for the people who don't want to attempt that, but I got to challenge some of the other people here. All right, moon salutation. Take a deep breath in, stretch up. Grasp one of your wrists. Just step back so you can see. And then draw it over to the side. Look to the sky for crescent moon. Come to center, deep breath in. Stretch up, grasp the other wrist. Draw it over, look up. Come to center, open up into your star. Lift the toes up, plant them to the mat. Draw the in earth energy in through your feet, up through your core, tightening up your leg muscles, tucking in your tailbone, sucking in your abs, rolling your shoulders back and down, closing your eyes, and envision giving the universe a great big hug. And then flip the palms so they face the sky, drop the head back, envision floating up to the sky. Come back to center, interlace the fingers, draw the hands down, open the chest up, drop the head back. Coming to center, take a deep breath here, in through the nose. Exhale, fold forward. Drawing the arms up. Give your head a shake. Release the hands, take one hand, bring it outside of the one ankle, stretch the other arm up. Now, if, you're, if you can't look all the way up to the sky, then just turn your head as far as it will comfortably go. And then switch sides. And then come to center, grab your elbows, drop your head, give a gentle sway side to side, keeping your head loose, allowing the gravity to pull your head closer to the earth. Pause in the center, take a deep breath in, stretch the arms all the way up to prayer, to heart center, open up the feet. Coming into your goddess pose, your palms can be facing each other or facing forward, whichever you prefer. Sink into goddess, lifting the toes up, clamping them to the mat, to drawing that earth energy in, up, tucking in the tailbone, sucking in the abs, bringing your hands to prayer, heel toe in a little bit. We're coming into garden pose. Again, um, a block will be handy for some of you or a little stool. For garland pose. If not, you can come right into a cobbler's pose. So I'll demonstrate both. So if you have a block, it you can come right down to your block. If you don't need a block, then that's fine. Use your elbows to push your knees open. Hold it there. For those who can't do that, you might want to just come into a cobbler's pose. Um, soles of your feet together, grabbing those so uh, soles. Uh, your feet straight back, lean forward and press against your legs, your elbows against your legs. And then you can come to your one knee. You might want to take a towel for your knee, a folded up towel, and stretch the other leg out. And then flip the foot up, drawing the toes towards your body. You should feel the, the stretch all along your leg. And the other side. Okay. Flip the foot up, draw the toes towards you. Good, draw it in, okay. So here's another, a little bit more advanced pose. If you guys don't feel that you're up to it, you can remain um, in a cobbler's pose. 
or come back into the publish post if you like, or a hero's post. Um, and those who would like to try crow pose, um, you can follow me. So for crow pose, we're gonna come to the ball of our feet in a squat. Our hands are gonna be flat on the mat. Fingers spread open wide. We're gonna be gazing forward, not straight down for crow. Um, so your hands are about shoulder distance apart. And you're gonna to have to feel around for where your feet should be because what you want to do is have your shins resting on the back of your arms. So you're gonna raise your rear end up all these poses kind of look a little bit obscene, but <laughs> what are you gonna do? Okay, so then lean forward, resting your shins on the back of your arms, on your triceps. Raise one foot and then the other foot. And then just keep trying it. It takes a while to get, to get it. The trick is to practice it often, and then one day you're gonna get it. So, I'll give those instructions one more time. Palms flat on the mat, shoulder distance apart, gazing more forward, raising the rear and up, placing the shins on the back of the arm, and raising the feet up. Okay, so that's the end of the advanced moves. So let's give that a shake and a twist. So we'll come into a staff pose. If you have your strap, that would be great. If not, don't worry about it. You're just gonna fold forward. Raising the arms up, take a deep breath here in through the nose. Exhale, pull forward. Wrapping the strap if you have one, just so that you can pull closer to your feet. If not, maybe you can just grab the soles of your feet or your ankles wherever your reach lands. Everyone's arms are a different length, so don't, uh, don't worry about comparing yourself. And then drawing your foot in, tucking it into your thigh. We're gonna raise our opposite arm up, the, our opposite arm to the leg is extended. You can take your other hand and just support yourself. Take a deep breath here into the nose. Exhale, fold forward. See if you can stretch to the outside of your foot grabbing. If not, the outside of your leg. Trying to keep the back straight, like not really curvy, and it still looks curved, but try and keep it as straight as you can. And then release. We're gonna do a version of wild thing. So for wild thing, keeping your, your leg in this position, so you're gonna take your hand to support you the same, the hand that's on the same side as the bended knee, and just roll up to that knee, point the toes, stretch up, and then tilt back, opening the chest up, and then come down. Let's try the other side. So bringing the other foot, tucking it into the thigh, Opposite hand up, taking a deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Grabbing wherever on the outside of the foot that you can reach. Trying to keep the back as straight as you can. So you're lengthening forward. And then release. I'm going to do the same thing, keeping um, this knee bent in that position. I'm going to switch hands to support you, the other hand to support you. Roll up to that knee, 
stretch up, and then tilt back. And it's just a really nice stretch. And how are we doing? Okay, we got two minutes left. So I want, I'd really like to do um, fish pose today. So for fish pose, lying on the back, give yourself a full body stretch first, and then bringing your, the palms of your hands and tucking them underneath your hips, pointing your toes, come up to your elbows. And then drop your head back. So you can remain right here or you can slide down to turn your head to the mat. Pointing the toes, you want to engage your whole body. And then relax, give yourself a full body stretch. And the last one, we're going to just do um, a bow pose. So roll onto the tummy, bend up your knee, your legs at your knees, reach behind you, touching your feet. Now, if bow, a full bow pose is too difficult for you, you can do a half bow, which you'll just grab one leg and support yourself with the, the um, opposite arm. Or you're going to do your bow pose, full bow pose, catching your feet, kicking in to your hands. And you can rock if you like. I always like to rock. Now, if you've done the half bow, okay, everybody release. If you've done the half bow, you're going to support yourself with the other arm and reach back and grab your foot. Or if you did full bow, you're going to do the full bow again. So reach back. Catch the feet, kick in, and you can rock. And release, come round to your back. So I'm gonna end off here. So it's up to you, whatever kind of twist you like. So you can have your knees bent, arms outstretched to your sides, and you can either just Tilt your legs over, looking to the opposite hand, or you can cross your legs and tilt over, looking to the opposite hand, or you can bring your legs to a twist. Drop the knees, look to the opposite hand. Whatever is um, that's for you. If you want to add extra pressure, you take your your opposite hand or the hand that reach your knee. Place your hand on that knee and give um a little pressure there. And then other side. So once again, arms are open. You can either tilt both knees or you can cross your legs and tilt it or you can twist your legs together and drop it. You can take your hand and place it on those knees. Look to your opposite hand. For a nice stretch and twist, detoxifying those internal organs. And then you can take a full body stretch. We're going to do a two minute Shavasana here. So relax your arms on either side of you. If it's not good for your back, if you'd rather be on your stomach, you can go ahead and be on your stomach. Some people don't want to be on their back. So taking a deep breath. In here, in through the nose, out to the mouth. Again, deep breath in, envision breathing in the love of the universe. Exhaling any tension that might be left in your body. Inhale the love of the universe. Exhale your own loving and peaceful vibrations into the world and the universe. Feel your arms and legs melting into the earth. Feel your shoulders melting into the earth. Feel the gravity of the earth pulling your body down towards the center of the earth. 
Envision my hands being rested on your shoulders and giving you a gentle press to those shoulders towards the ground and press your own shoulders towards the ground. And then whenever you're ready, release those shoulders, be totally relaxed. You can envision yourself beginning to float up towards the sky. We'll start the next two minutes with the tin sha symbols and end it with the tin sha symbols. to wiggle your fingers and toe, hands and feet. And then you may want to draw your knees into your chest. And then if you like, tilt them to the side, coming into your fetal position. You might want to stay here a little while. It's up to you. If not, Come up into your comfortably seated position. And we'll end with a namaste, bringing your hands to heart center. So from my heart to yours, namaste.